hey, be honest, how much attention do you pay to the accessory drive system? That is the serpentine belt and related components. Well, you might want to spend a little more time on it after you hear what I have to share with you in today's edition of The Trainer. Did you know that the serpentine belt is a wear item, just like tires or brake pads? And like other wear items, it needs to be inspected on a regular basis and replaced when it wears below its service limits. Why is this so important? The rotational movement of the crankshaft is anything but uniform. The sheer nature of the four-stroke cycle has each piston slowing and accelerating constantly, causing a vibration that is passed along to the accessory drive via the crankshaft. Now, when the components are within service limits, the problem is manageable. But belt wear as little as 5% can lead to belt slippage and flutter. And these conditions can cause excessive heat and extra load in the accessory drive system which in turn can cause premature wear, even failure, of any of the components being driven by the belt. Now a visual inspection is not enough. You're going to need a special tool similar to this one in order to assess the belt's wear. The good news is every belt manufacturer makes a version of the tool and odds are pretty good your parts house has plenty of them in stock. To check the belt, place the tool in the belt's grooves perpendicular and 90 degrees to the belt itself. If the tool lies flat on the belt, like this, the belt is worn beyond its limits and needs to be replaced. If there is an air gap, like this, and no visual signs of other damage, the belt is still serviceable. Now, the belt is not the only wear item in the system. Commonly overlooked, is the belt tensioner. Most manufacturers recommend that you replace the tensioner whenever you replace the serpentine belt. And many of the manufacturers offer kits, just as our sponsor Ina does, to make it that much easier for you to do so. But maybe the belt was replaced and the tensioner wasn't. Not a bad idea to perform a visual inspection on the tensioner with the engine running, just to make sure. The two most common areas of wear in the belt tensioner is in the damper assembly or in the pivot bushing. Now remember those torsional forces that I talked about earlier? Well, a typical tensioner will absorb over a billion of them over the course of 100,000 miles. Wear in the damper allows excess movement of the tensioner arm, resulting in reduced tension on the belt and resulting in loss of tension and possible belt flutter. When inspecting, some movement of the tensioner is normal, but excessive movement is indicative of a problem. Now wear to the dampener also leads to wear in the pivot bushing. And as the pivot bushing wears, it changes the angle of alignment of the pulley relative to the belt. And as little as one degree of change in angle can result in excessive heat. And we talked about what that's going to do. That gets passed along to every component that the belt drives. Think we're done? Not quite yet. Now it's no secret that the OEMs are producing smaller power plants, and even so, these small power plants are producing the same levels of power as the V8s of old used to. They're also applying an increased load to the accessory drive system, and a common solution to overcome that problem is called the alternator decoupler pulley, or ADP. The idea behind the pulley is a simple one. The alternator represents the largest mass being driven by the accessory drive system. So if there were a way to decouple it when engine loads were reduced, even momentarily, then we could dampen some of that load through the system and calm the belt drive down. There are two basic types, the overrunning alternator decoupler, or OAD, and the overrunning alternator pulley, or OAP, with the OAP the most common. Now both the OAP and OAD have the same ability to decouple the alternator from the belt drive system, but they do it quite differently. Now the OAP simply allows the alternator to freewheel whenever the belt speed drops. 
The OAP contains a one-way clutch, and that allows the rotational inertia of the alternator to overrun the pulley whenever belt speed is reduced. As might occur when the transmission experiences an upshift, the vehicle is decelerating or the engine is shut down. Now, OADs, on the other hand, also have a one-way clutch mechanism, but they also include a spring dampening assembly that helps further to isolate the alternator inertia from the belt drive as the belt speed changes. Now, these two designs are also vastly different from the solid pulleys that are used still on many alternators. Key here to remember is that often the OAD and OAP is made for a specific application. None of them can be interchanged. It's important to understand this because it's not uncommon for you to receive a reman alternator that has the wrong pulley installed for the vehicle that you're servicing. Now while the two function differently, the symptoms of failure are very similar. They include belt noise, vehicle vibration, a charging system failures, even complete failure of the alternator or drive belt. Here's how to test the function of an OAP pulley off the car. For the first test, hold the inner ring. Now try to rotate the outer ring in the same direction as the belt would. The outer ring should not move. If it does, replace the pulley. For test number two, Again, hold the inner ring. Rotate the outer ring in the opposite direction as the belt would. The outer ring should rotate. If it doesn't, replace the pulley. Now, if the pulley fails either of these tests, it needs to be replaced. And it, just like the belt and tensioner, is a wear item. Replace one, replace all three. And when you do, consider using a quality replacement kit like the accessory drive kit offered by our sponsor, Eno. Thanks for watching.